Is Final Fantasy VI worth playing in 2022? If you've seen any videos on this channel before, you know I love my JRPGs, and out of all the JRPGs out there, one of the top franchises I adore, and always will no matter what, is Final Fantasy. It was one of the first franchises I truly found myself falling in love with as a kid when I first played Crisis Core on the PSP, soon followed by Dissidia, and then Final Fantasy XIII on the Xbox 360. Yes, that might be the most random order to get introduced into Final Fantasy, but that's kind of the beauty of it. There is no right place to start. Then again, do keep in mind I'm also the same guy that played Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days as my first Kingdom Hearts ever, and Bioshock Infinite was my first Bioshock game, which should tell you a lot about my childhood. But regardless, that love for the franchise has stuck around since then. Over the years, I have played all the Final Fantasy entries from 7 onwards, with 11 being the only exception. I also went back and played Final Fantasy 4 for the first time about 2 years ago. You can even find videos about some of these games on the channel already, presented in a very similar format to the video you're watching right now. So by doing some simple maths and counting only the mainline numbered entries, there are 5 more games I have yet to play and complete. However, of that 5, there is only one that makes me feel like I committed a crime by not playing. It. Which brings us to today, this video, and Final Fantasy VI. No matter what I do or say, as soon as it's revealed that I have yet to play Final Fantasy VI, the comments start coming through like it's Aaron Yeager and Rumley. Considered by many the best entry in the series, there was no escaping it, so here I am to officially say I've done it. In the year 2022, 28 years after its original release, I have played and completed the pixel remastered version of Final Fantasy VI, and to be fair, I actually specifically waited for the release of this version for reasons I'll get into later in the video, but it has something to do with the idea of playing a really really old games. Regardless if you played Final Fantasy VI before or you are interested in checking it out for the first time ever, this video will look into the game and if it's worth playing in 2022, when compared to other games out right now or just other titles that have come out since then because believe it or not, 28 years is a long time. So all I wanted to do is to see if it still holds up to all the high praise it has and is it still worth putting time into for anybody interested. All of the opinions in this video are coming from someone who loves the franchise, played multiple of its older entries as well as older JRPGs in general, but has only now experienced this specific game for the first time. Now I do want these videos to be watchable not just for the fans of the game, but also those that have wanted to play this game down the line like I recently did. So I will do my best to make sure this video is as close to being spoiler free as possible, meaning no late game bosses, areas or plot reveals will be mentioned, however, I will need to give away some details that are revealed within the first 5-6 to six hours or so to fully explain different points I want to get across. None of what I say is something I would personally consider to ruin the overall experience, if someone told me these things before I played, I wouldn't mind or be upset so I'm just hoping that's the case with you as well. So whilst I might bring up some events that take place, I'm not going to continue down the path of mentioning how they turn out by the end game. Now as far as the gameplay goes, it will be a mix of sections throughout the game, the high majority of it will be the first half and once again, no major story relevant bosses or cutscenes will be shown. If you guys do find this video an enjoyable one, then a like and a comment is honestly the best form of support you could give me, it helps so much for the channel to grow moving forward. Your opinions are always appreciated as well, so even if you disagree with anything or everything I have to say today, then I will gladly read that comment because end of the day my opinion is worth literally no more than yours. But with that said, let's just crack on. Final Fantasy VI takes place in a world where unlike most Final Fantasy games or just fantasy games in general, within its first opening minutes you are given information that magic isn't exactly easy to come across. This is due to a war, or more specifically the War of Magi, or Magi, whatever you, however, yeah. Whatever. It was a catastrophic war which came close to not only just destroying the world, but it also resulted in humanity falling back centuries in its development. Normally when I do these videos I like to start by giving a basic idea of what to expect from its story and its setup. Usually there is a single hook, something that will make you want to explore further and find out answers only for it to turn into something much greater and bigger than it initially seems. It is the most typical JRPG stuff ever. For example Final Fantasy XIII, that's the concept of wanting to complete our focus, or in the case of Final Fantasy XV, it's a journey to reclaim the throne. And whilst that is the case with Final Fantasy VI, there isn't just one hook. All of this will start with Terra, who is accompanied by two soldiers in Magitek armor that refer to her as a witch that will follow all of their commands. 
The three of them attack a nearby snow-covered town in order to retrieve a sleeping Esper, but upon reaching this Esper, there seems to be some sort of reaction between it and Terra. Next thing you know, Terra wakes up in a house of someone telling her how they removed the slave crown she was wearing, which affected her freedom to think and act. This is followed by city guards coming to the house in order to capture Terra as she is considered a Magitek armor pilot, which is accurate by all accounts, resulting in her having to escape from mines located at the back of the house. During this short segment, Terra has to fight off some very simple monsters which aren't a threat but they do a great job of showcasing the difference in power Terra has outside of the Magitek armor she was previously using. During the initial attack on the Esper, nothing stood a chance against any attacks, whereas now it takes two hits to deal with the most simple creatures. We fast forward a little bit more, Terra is cornered, she falls down a hole and gets knocked out. This results in a flashback vision of her and a mysterious man called Kefka where he calls her his magic user as well as it is also revealed he is the one that put the slave crown on her in the first place. What follows this is one of the very first character introductions Final Fantasy VI will do throughout your playthrough as it switches over the gameplay to a brand new character, Locke. This is a cycle that will be constantly repeated throughout the game, not just the opening hours. Just as you start getting familiar with one character, the game will suddenly introduce you to someone brand new, sometimes even having them take over. However, at no point is this a flaw, and that's because the huge range of characters that Final Fantasy VI offers is the story itself. I was constantly surprised how the game kept bringing in more and more characters, and yet everyone brings in more information, lore, secrets and identity to the story and world of Final Fantasy VI. At no section does it feel like the story is stagnant or bland. With the constant change of perspective for the eyes of multiple protagonists, it's like one big jigsaw that's just being put together, however, without any moments of not knowing which piece goes next. It's fluid and it understands when to switch the scenery to avoid burnout of a single area, character or the centre of discussion. Overall, the pacing of the game is decently fast and each section felt like it needed to be there. There isn't many moments moments that you can honestly look back on and say it could have been skipped because all of them play a role in the main plot and world building. You're gonna have moments learning about the Empire and its plans to take over the world, followed by learning about the history of espers, magic and how these powers live on in certain individuals. All of this happens whilst characters are developing brand new relationships during your time with them, getting to know other members and growing side by side. You continue to gain just enough information to care and want more whilst avoiding knowing too much too quickly. I was genuinely surprised by how well done the pacing and storytelling was even from the earliest moments of the game. This made the late or even mid-game reveals and events much more impactful and memorable as you're constantly gaining these small bits of detail leading up to a bigger reveal. And since I already mentioned Espers a second ago, it should be pointed out this might be the most I remember them being involved in a story of a Final Fantasy game. They are a major plot point to the past and current events as well as characters. It truly felt like 90% of things that happened somehow related to the Espers which made them so much more fascinating and not just something you use once in a while in a fight to deal big damage. Something that many other Final Fantasy games unfortunately just can't find a balance of. Where Final Fantasy 4 is recognised to have this huge focus on crystals, I would say Final Fantasy 6 is the summons or Espers in this case version of that. There is constant depth and development that goes into this game, but what gives it an edge over many other entries is how it manages to make you feel the early game excitement of knowing so little for as long as it does. Just when you think you got things figured out, it will suddenly reveal something you most likely didn't see coming and it manages to do this over and over again without feeling predictable. I am not claiming whatsoever that it has the biggest reviews in gaming or anything close to that, but it's the excitement and intrigue that it managed to bring out of you that does deserve the high praise. For me to go forward and talk about the story in any more detail, even if it is spoiler free, I simply have to switch the focus of the discussion to the characters because, like I mentioned, they are the story of this game. One of the most surprising features of Final Fantasy VI is the fact it manages to constantly introduce new characters, make each one feel unique, memorable and relevant to the story. For the most part, they all manage to add necessary details to the main plot, whilst also having their own side stories and memories of the past that you, the player, will care about. As you continue going through the game, you get to separate your group into multiple units to tackle different sections of the story, with the occasional chance to even get specific dialogue depending on who you have with you. These dialogues may not be the most crucial bit of details, as after all, they are missable, but they do add more depth and history to the world. I keep kind of mentioning that, but the world building of Final Fantasy VI is just amazing. 
the game simply just doesn't give you 100% of its lore through the main story. A good example is early on in the game you visit Figaro Castle, and whilst you can go through the entire thing only speaking to the people you must, if you actually take your time to explore and engage in more conversations, you'll start hearing about the Empire's plans, Kefka's reputation, rumours regarding upcoming events, and so on. It rewards your curiosity by providing these character specific dialogues when you decide to explore and interact with what sometimes might feel like the most random NPC. So not only does this make you think about who you want interacting, just in case there is some specific dialogue to hear, but it also encourages you not to use the same 3 or 4 go to characters all the time. Now will you care about everyone on equal levels? No, of course not. Especially when there's as many characters as FF6 provides you with, there are 14 in total. It would be ridiculous to expect each one of them to be developed equally within a 35 to 40 hour game. However, for a solid half of them, you will most likely care. There are a few standouts that come to mind, such as Locke, Celeste, the two brothers, Edgar and Sabin. But when looking at the entire game, two characters stood out far, far more than anyone else. Now remember, for the sake of this video, I will not be diving into details to avoid spoilers, so you are safe, once again, if you are yet to play Final Fantasy VI, but I wanted to highlight these two a bit individually before moving on. First of all, we have Terra, who, as I mentioned previously, is technically speaking the main character of the game. However, unlike some other entries, such as Final Fantasy X, 15, 9, and so on, the story doesn't need her to be involved all the time in order to progress. In sections where she's not there, characters like Locke will fill in the role of the protagonist and it feels extremely natural. That's not to take anything away from her character overall because individually she goes through so many stages of hardship, self-understanding and acceptance of who she is, what she's capable of and how to use her powers for what she believes is right. Remember how at the beginning she's someone who has no ability to think for herself? Well, as the story goes on we find out more about her past, what makes her so much different from everyone else and how much she can help the returners in changing the outcome of the battles to come. The Terra from the first couple hours of the game isn't fitting to be a main leader, and doesn't seem like someone you would usually have as a main character for a Final Fantasy game, but as you continue playing you do so in order to see where her character ends up in the grand scheme of things. Questions from early moments regarding the encounter with the Esper or the past of her and Kefka stay in the back of your mind waiting for the answers to eventually come around and seeing how they shape up her character. As for the second individual, well, I just mentioned him a second ago and it has to be the main antagonist of the story. Kefka. This could very much just be a me thing, but I will always take a well-written, developed and truly memorable villain over an incredible protagonist any day of the week. Take characters like Vast from Far Cry 3, Andrew Ryan in Bioshock, the Joker from the Batman games or even Sephiroth from Final Fantasy 7. All of these are icons from some of the best games we've had. These villains steal the spotlight every single time they are on the screen and it's them that you'll remember most when all is said and done. And to say Final Fantasy VI does this would be an understatement. I will admit it, I was very skeptical about Kefka before starting FF6 for two main reasons. First, I heard nothing but crazy high praise about how he's one of the greatest villains in gaming and even though that should get me excited to see it for myself, in my eyes that just sets up a potentially easy disappointment. There have been games in the past where I heard nothing but the highest praise, only to be extremely disappointed by the time I was done. I will show some of them on the screen now, so if these are some of your favourite games then <laughs> I, I apologise I guess. But regardless of all that, I went into the game with all these expectations only to be done and tell you that indeed Kefka is a truly, truly memorable character, far outshining anyone else in a game that, as I mentioned, relies a lot on its characters and building the world through them. Every single moment shared with Kefka on screen is fascinating, but sometimes even filled with anxiety. His dialogue leaves you with a lot of questions, just what is going on inside his head? Is he really all that powerful or is it more just madness spouting nonsense? Should you be worried when he's on screen with a character you've grown attached to? These are the sort of questions that can go rushing through your head whilst going through the story of Final Fantasy VI. And it's that uncertainty of not being able to figure him out that keeps the excitement high regardless which point of the story it is. A lot of great characters in gaming have these incredible opening hours only for that initial strong statement to die out as the game goes on and you become more powerful. But in the case of Kefka, I would say his craziness and control over the direction of the story only continue to grow all the way until the game's biggest reveals. I don't want to put a specific ranking or where I would have him among other Final Fantasy villains as recency bias sure is a thing, but to say he is a top 3 villain, that's a guaranteed statement. 
As far as the gameplay goes, I will be splitting this into two sections. First, we'll look over the presentation and exploration, then follow all of that up with the combat. These are the areas that are most likely the biggest borders keeping people away from playing this game, so if you're someone who's not sure about the idea of playing a, technically speaking, 28 year old game, then you might want to stick around for this section. Now, I'm going to keep things 100% clear with everyone, I much rather prefer playing modern games, even if it's just for the graphics and soundtrack. Seeing something be fully visualized in clear HD, sometimes hopefully 3D models, allows me to immerse myself in the story much more, and as much as nostalgia is an extremely powerful thing, I can't exactly feel nostalgia for something that is 4 years older than me. So there goes that. I often find it harder to enjoy older games for what many might consider silly reasons and I fully understand if you feel this way, but the idea of losing directions when walking around a town because things are pixelated is something that can take away from the game enjoyment for me oh so much, as well as the pitch of some tracks. There is something about these older games and their music that makes my ears really uncomfortable after a while, I just can't sit down and play 5 hours straight, even if I had the time. And this brings me back to what I said at the beginning and why I waited for the Pixel Remaster, hoping for it to be the most up to date and clear version of a classic game, which in all fairness does seem to be the case. Whilst a lot of what makes these older games hard to play for me is still there, I would much rather play this version that stays loyal to the original from so many years ago rather than the iOS one which is just straight up horrendous looking. Do not play this. Whatever you do, just don't. I think this remaster did a good job of making this world a bit clearer, especially when looking at the backgrounds plus the character models. No, it's not what we're used to nowadays, but it certainly made the experience better for my eyes at least. That said, I still had many moments where I looked at the screen in front of me and just thought to myself, well now what? Some areas of the game look extremely similar, or you walk up to something thinking it's a door or a chest, only to find out, no, it's just a random box that serves absolutely no service to you whatsoever. Then in the open world, this can get even worse when all you see is sand or grass in every direction you look, but I have to give Final Fantasy VI props because it does something not many games this old do. It does actually allow you to check the map with the names of every area, so if you know where to go next, you simply open up the max and you're all set. Now, I specifically said when you know where to go next, because just like many other older games, you need to stay on top of where you're going at all times. There is no such thing as a diary or quest log suggestion showing you which area you should go to next. A lot of people will say you should just listen properly, which yeah, that is very true. But my issue is if I haven't played the game in a week or two, you can't always expect me to perfectly remember what I'm supposed to do next, especially when you need to speak to one specific individual just to get the next bit of story details. I am fully aware aware that this is more of a general issue when it comes to older games, but I thought it is worth mentioning, especially for people who just haven't played something this old before. So as a heads up, whenever you forget where to go next, a quick google search will save you a lot of random encounters. And I do want to point that out before moving on, the encounter rate in this game is surprisingly really high. Again, I've played old games, but it felt like this one was even higher than usual. It is a little bit hard to compare to other games from similar years as I haven't played one recently, but it did feel like every 7-8 steps or so I would have to fight again and again. Plus the fact that some of its dungeons can be very tedious and hard to navigate due to the visuals doesn't help the frustration you might face at times, especially when you're running low on HP or items to recover. Now as far as the music goes, I was genuinely very surprised by how enjoyable it was throughout. Sometimes the same track would play for really long segments and I wouldn't even notice, it just fit in so well with the atmosphere and everything going on. In fact, the very first note I made when I was playing for this video is how good the opening track was. It somehow managed to give me a good sense of what sort of a story I'm about to witness and honestly speaking, that stuck true until the end. The tracks are recognisable when I hear a certain track from the game now, I can imagine which point of the game it was or what was taking place in front of me at that specific time. I may not have it at the very top of my list as there was only a few real standout tracks, but Final Fantasy VI's soundtrack overall is one I'll be sure to remember even years down the line. So we've looked at the story, the characters, exploration, graphics, soundtrack, but now it's time to tackle the combat. See what I did there? Tackle. There's your one sh joke for a video. Classic Final Fantasy means classic combat, in other words, turn-based. You can control up to four characters at a time, taking turns selecting what to do. 
Each character can do a basic attack or use items as well as guard, but there are character specific actions which is what you will be relying on most of the time. Some characters can use magic such as Terra or Celeste, whilst Edgar can use tools, Saban can use blitz and Locke can even use steel. Other characters have other skills but these are just my favourites. These specific actions is what will most likely decide who your main 4 characters are to use for the toughest battles. So whilst you may have favourite characters in terms of personality or story relevance, sometimes it just isn't clever to use them for combat. Unfortunately, I had to learn that the hard way with Locke. My man just wasn't good enough. I mentioned earlier how magic isn't as easy to come by in this world, so characters with magic abilities will feel extra useful, especially in the early game as they will have that advantage over everyone else. As the story goes on, you will gain access to espers, allowing you to actually learn magic from them. This gives a reason for equipping all sorts of different espers to learn magic rather than just using the same ones over and over again. That's something I really appreciated. I feel like with Final Fantasy, once you get certain summons, you just keep spamming them. But in the case of Final Fantasy VI, there's actual reason to use each one, similar to how Final Fantasy VIII did this as well. I'm not saying this is the only game that does this, by the way. I'm just saying it's one of the few that does it. Once one character has learned all the magic abilities that Esper can provide, provide them with, they will then remember those spells and you can equip that aspect to another member. As much as I liked some characters and wanted to use them, there was no denying some are far more useful in combat, with my personal favourite being Edgar thanks to his tools ability, especially in the first half of the game. His damage dealing abilities quickly exceeded the rest of my party members, leading to me sometimes just soloing enemies with him whilst everyone else was back up. In the end, my top 4 characters to use were Terra, Edgar, Sabin and Celeste. I knew if I couldn't beat someone of these 4, then I was most certainly underleveled. Although, that said, I am happy to claim Final Fantasy VI is far from the most difficult Final Fantasy game. Yeah, you might need to grind here or there, but it is nowhere near what some of the other games will have you going through, such as Final Fantasy IV or Final Fantasy IX, which were the worst ones for me. The combat is fairly simple, but it's fast paced, which makes it more enjoyable than it might seem at first glance. All in all, if you've ever played a turn based game, then you know what to expect. It's simple, not too slow, and there's a good amount of character variety in the movesets. So this brings us to the question, should you play Final Fantasy VI now in 2022 or whatever year you're watching this in? Well I can't just say yes or no because we have our differences, but let me break it down a little bit. Final Fantasy VI is an old classic JRPG, meaning pixel graphics, little sense of direction at times and high random encounter rates. These three can add up to some fairly frustrating moments where you just want to move on in the story but you're walking around in circles gaining XP instead. If that's something you like, great, but if you just want to move on, clearly you're out of luck. This can be especially painful in a game that rewards the idea of exploration and going around speaking to everyone. On one hand you want to go to that village over there but then you know you're going to have to keep fighting both on the way there and the way back. The combat itself is very much classic turn based so when comparing it to something more modern like Dragon Quest XI, Persona 5 or even Final Fantasy X then it most definitely shows its age. But in all fairness, comparing any turn-based game to those is simply unfair. These are some of the highest regarded turn-based combats we've ever had. To give Final Fantasy VI props, the combat is decently fast paced and it offers a good amount of character to character variety which makes it more than just basic or generic. It gives a reason to experiment with different lineups as well as playing around with different equipment and espers depending on the section of the game. You won't experience any incredible voice acting of course or even cutscenes maybe with the exception of one, but yet the game manages to bring across emotions and impact in so many of its scenes with the help of some amazing music as well as great dialogue and general script. The game offers some of the best characters characters I have seen in JRPGs both modern and old and that's coming from someone who has played a lot of these games. I just want to make that clear. These guys, this group of 14 genuinely stands out as one of the best groups I've seen in recent years. As far as Kefka goes, he is every bit the villain that everyone on the internet makes him out to be and seeing the main cast go against him is a big hook that's hard to let go of. There are so many big and small reasons to fall in love with the cast, their individual stories and wanting to see where they end up by the end. Everyone just feels like they have some major part to play in the final result of this tale. And even if some characters are clearly better than others, which is of course going to happen, it's still impressive that in a cast of 14 playable characters, over half feel well written out. I'm willing to say this was one of the most immersed I've been in an older JRPG in many years. The story keeps evolving in multiple ways and just when you think you have it all figured out, it will throw another twist your way. So if you're someone who hasn't enjoyed JRPGs from the 90s, then no. 
This game won't suddenly change that for you, you still have to deal with the many issues these games come with. However, if you're okay putting up with these old habits and game mechanics, then Final Fantasy VI has an incredible tale to offer that can rival many of the most iconic stories out there, and is most certainly a story you should experience. So there we go, what did you guys think of Final Fantasy VI, or if you haven't played it, do you think you're going to check it out now? Let me know in the comments. I honestly really enjoyed my time with the game, and as much as I wanted to discuss certain plot points, or plot point, I thought I should just keep continuing to make the worth playing series spoiler free, in case someone needs a video like this where they can just safely watch it. Quick update on future projects before I go, uh, it will soon be time to continue the Kingdom Hearts games critiques. Super, super stoked and excited to do that, finally. I should have done this ages ago, but I kept telling myself to do a Final Fantasy VII remake critique and then do a worth playing on Final Fantasy 6 and before you know it here I am and it's been months since the Chain of Memories video. Hopefully some of you are still excited for those concerned the next one might be or rather it will most certainly be the biggest one as it is Kingdom Hearts 2. That's enough said right? Just goddamn Kingdom Hearts 2. I mentioned it earlier but if you did enjoy this video then that like button would do so much for me and it honestly helps more than most people realize and I know it's effort but it's the best thing you could possibly do outside of comments so if you genuinely enjoy the video that's that's all I'm asking for. Before I head out, if anyone is still watching this bit, just letting you know I'm planning to start streaming around July time. So if you're down, let me know. I think by then I'll be all set up to give it a go and give it like six months before the end of the year. So we'll see how it all goes, you know, if it goes well or not. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. And hopefully I will see you around in the next one or whenever it might be on a stream. Who knows? Have a good one.